Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we are here to look at the Acer XB280HK, which is a 28 inch 4K monitor. You can see it sitting here next to me. Uh, the big feature, of course, and added into this monitor is support for NVIDIA G Sync. So, this is that somewhat mythical, finally and nearly available. 4K G-Sync panel that we have been discussing for some time. So the specifications of this monitor are very similar to what we've seen in other of the low-cost 4K monitors that have come out in the market, either from Samsung or Asus. It's a 28-inch 3840 by 2160 resolution. It's rated at a one millisecond response time. Um, you know, take that for what you will. I'm sure it's a gray to gray. Um, it does have uh, only one single display input option. It is Display Port. Obviously, that is one of the kind of oddities or requirements of having a G-Sync capable display. Um, panel quality wise, the XB280HK is basically on par with what we have seen on those same 4K panels from Samsung or Asus, the Asus uh, PB287Q, for example. Uh, you get pretty good viewing angles from top left and right. It's pretty bad viewing angle, very shallow viewing angle before you get inversion when looking from the bottom. I don't consider that to be a big deal though. Not a whole lot of people are looking at these monitors from underneath their desk for any reason like that. Uh, and we had pretty good experiences using it uh, kind of as watching somebody over the shoulder if you were doing collaborative work or something like that. Uh, it's not an IPS panel. It's definitely a TN screen, but it is, again, they have been improving on TN technology pretty rapidly, I think, and this is another one of those pretty good examples of that. Uh, the stand is decent. It is much better than the Samsung 4K that we had, but not as good as the Asus PB287Q. It's a little bit uh, flimsy in, in that if you touch it or if you move the table, it kind of rattles around. And it's a little bouncy for a little bit before it resettles, but you have, you have height adjustment uh, and you have angle adjustment and you have the ability to turn it and rotate it into a portrait mode if you want to do that. If you do turn it into a portrait mode, you may run into that issue of that kind of bottom viewing angle. Uh, being affected or being much more visible than you might like. Uh, in terms of connectivity, I mentioned it only has a display port for video input. Other than that, it really only has a power connection, it has a power switch, and then it has a USB hub. Uh, they do supply you with a uh, USB 3 cable, and you get two ports on the side and two ports on the underside of the monitor, which is, which is kind of nice. One of those ports is actually, uh, they, I think they call it like USB charge worthy. So even if the monitor's off, that will still charge and power it. Uh, the only other complaint I really have about that is the DisplayPort cable they give you is only like four feet long, which is kind of annoying, even where we had the monitor set up on our test bed and uh, we're playing some games on it, like basically that computer's on the desk next to us. It was a little bit of a limiting factor. Not a big deal, uh, but I think for a $699 monitor, maybe a six or maybe even 10 foot DisplayPort cable would have been a nice addition there. Performance wise, uh, you know, we played around, I played some Metro Last Light, some Battlefield 4, Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, Skyrim, all good experiences. Uh, if you don't have um, a background on what G-Sync is, we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel and lots of stories on PCPer.com describing G-Sync. I'll link to a couple of, couple of them in the descriptions and in the story on our site. Uh, but essentially, it is a variable refresh technology that allows the monitor to update in time with the GPUs to avoid uh, any kind of horizontal tearing and to avoid any stutter caused by vSync. Now, unlike the previous uh, G-Sync monitor we looked at, this is a 60 hertz panel, not a 144 hertz panel. So that means essentially, if your game is able to run at 60 hertz or higher, 60 frames per second or higher, you're basically gonna be capped at that 60 frames per second level. And any kind of uh, stutter issues that may have shown up with vSync enabled would maybe show up here, right? Uh, but Again, this is a 4K monitor. It's going to require a lot of GPU horsepower to keep it fed with frames. So uh, if any monitor resolution were going to see benefits of G-Sync, I think this is it, right? So in my testing, I actually used a pair of GTX 980s, the brand new Maxwell cards that were released last week, and run, ran them in SLI, and we played Metro Last Light, and we played Crisis 3, in particular Crisis 3, uh, even running two 980s. We had to downscale to like medium image quality settings with 2x anti-aliasing instead of 4, and that kept us in the frame rates of about 40 to 50 or so, which would normally be a stuttery, torn up mess on a standard 60 hertz screen. But thanks to G-Sync technology, 
it was incredibly smooth, right? And that's something that is a benefit on a higher resolution monitor where you are more likely to be at lower frame rates than you would be with a 1080p or even a 2560 by 1440 display. So G-Sync, I think, makes more sense on this type of screen. It does not have ULMB, uh, even though the menus have that option in there grayed out. I don't really understand what that case is, but because it's only a 60 hertz panel, it doesn't do ULMB and it doesn't do 3D vision. Uh, so this is G-Sync only in terms of NVIDIA feature set. It is $799. That's an expensive monitor. It's the exact same price as the Asus ROG Swift uh, 2560 by 1440 G-Sync display that we reviewed a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. And it creates a, an interesting kind of comparison then. So essentially for the same price, you can buy a 4K 60 hertz G-Sync monitor or a 25 by 14 144 hertz G-Sync monitor. And now you get into a very interesting debate. Are you more concerned about uh, gaming at high refresh rates? You would go with the ROG Swift. If you maybe do a lot of productivity work and you see the benefit of a 4K resolution monitor and you think that would help you out a lot in other ways than just gaming, then uh, this Acer panel would probably be the one for you. Also keep in mind, you are going to want to have more GPU horsepower to power a 4K gaming experience than you would with the 25 by 14. So uh, a lot of debates in there. I'm sure lots of commenters will want to have their input on it. Um, there, there's a lot of reasons why you would go with one or the other. I think I would prefer this Acer monitor. I think Alan would rather prefer to have the 144 hertz refresh. It comes down to a lot of personal preference in that case. Uh, in terms of availability, all I know is, as they said, it will be available sometime in October. I thought early October, but they kind of reiterated to me, maybe you just say sometime in October. Uh, so you'll be able to get your hands on this sooner rather than later, which is a good thing. Uh, and again, this is the Acer XB280HK. So uh, we'll have more thoughts and details and pictures and everything in our full review at PCPro.com. So be sure to check that out. For now, it's time to start saving for uh, these $800 monitors and all of the graphics cards you're going to need to power them. Thanks, guys.